Okay, I'm going to show you a super easy way to convert your Word document to um, the file that you need to upload to KDP for your ebook. Okay, so assuming that you've already laid out, formatted, and um, pretty much gotten your, your print version ready to go or your Word doc ready to go, that's one assumption. If you're only doing an ebook and you don't have a print layout, that's fine because you won't need all this fancy stuff like the headers and the footers and things like that that go along with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on this little guy that's from the home screen so that we can see exactly what's happening in our document and fix anything that may cause an issue. We are going to then go from this print view. We're going to click on view and we're going to go to web layout. This allows us to see what it's going to look like. Now first thing, you want to make sure that your fonts are set appropriately because you don't want massive fonts on an ebook because they just won't render correctly and they'll look silly and you don't want a whole bunch of huge fonts in there. So generally speaking, headers, I don't usually, depending on the font, because some fonts are obviously going to be a lot smaller, but I usually set headers between 18 to 22, maybe a little bit um, less than that, depending on the thing, that the, um, the font again, maybe a little bit more than that. Okay. Um, you don't need a bunch of hard returns. An e-reader is not going to, the EPUB's not going to read those anyway. So if you want to get rid of them, you can. If you don't, it doesn't really matter. Um, however, I will say that's based on my experience using other um, things. I think in Word, they may actually show up. So if you don't want a bunch of extra spaces in there, get rid of them. Um, the way that it's going to determine when it, there's a page break is literally by these section breaks, section break, next page. So this is all going to be on your first page, then there's going to be a break. This is going to be on the second page. So you want to format this however you want it. Um, generally speaking, for the front matter, for the copyright page, everything is left aligned. So we're going to keep them with that. Um, and then in front matter, so you're going to have your title page, you're going to have your copyright page. <clears throat> if you want to link to your website or your publisher's website or, well, if you're using a publisher, they're probably doing all of this for you, right? So you would put your website here. You would put your print. Since this is a print, you're going to make sure that you put print ISBN and include that information there. Um, if you have an ebook ISBN, you'd put that there. If you don't have an ISBN at all, you take it out. Okay. Then if you don't know how to do these section breaks, it's really easy. You go up here to layout. Oh, I'm sorry. You go to design. I'm sorry. You go to insert. <laughs> I don't use word very much on this. Okay. Hold on. Where are these? I thought it was under layout. Um, yes, here it is. I was right in the first place. Layout, you go to breaks and you get it, go to next page. Okay, that's really important for the ebook, or you're going to wind up with um, everything flowing all together. So every time you see a section break next page, that's where the break is going to, that's, there's going to be a break and um, a new page will start on the e reader. Okay. So something else that's really important is that you go through and you style your headers that you need. And this will help you um, uh, keep everything consistent and, and for, well, okay, just, it, yeah. So I would go and style, add, um, you may have to be on the print layout to get to the headers, but you can go up here and um, home You'll see the style pane up here. You can also click on the style pane where you can set a new header. You can create a new style based on that. Title it what you want it to be. And, um, and then that allows you to make sure that everything is consistent every time because this is now an H1. So I'm going to make sure that everything is H1. Every chapter number is H1 so that I know they're exactly the same. I'm actually going to keep it where I had it on heading one. Um, 
and we're going to close the style pane. You can also set that up for your text so that you know that your text always looks the same um, and your text should be fully justified with an indent. Okay, and then create that as like body or text or something like that and save it so that you can make sure everything is set up the same way. So I'm going to call this uh, body text. I want it justified. There we go. And if you've already set up the text, it'll modify everything to go with that. Okay. Back to, let's close the style pane. Let's go back to the web layout. So you've got stuff set up. You're doing good. You're going to go through and you're going to look for, you're going to make sure at the end of each chapter you include a section break. Uh, you can have some extra um, hard returns if you want to move the two lower down on the page. Otherwise, you know, set them however you want to. If you're doing a break in a section, if you have multiple sections, I recommend you do something like this. It's one of the easiest things to render a section break um, off through this method of using a Word document that we're going to upload as an HTML document. Um, so just make a hard return, add in your centered asterisks, and another hard return. Okay, so you go through, you want to make sure there are no there are no section breaks where there shouldn't be section breaks um, or weird returns where there shouldn't be weird returns. Um, clean up all of that kind of stuff. Make sure it's it's good in terms of, you know, um, there's some weird stuff going on in this document that I would have to clean up further, but for now, for the sake of it, I'm just going to show you a couple of you know cleaning it up making sure that the section breaks are where we want them and they're consistent and um, I don't know why this is there see this is why we turn on the little um, paragraph thingy so we can see all the weird stuff that's happening in our document because what would happen when we saved it and uploaded it to Kindle is there would be a page break right here regardless of whether this was the first line on the um, page or not and sometimes it's in the middle, you know, and that, so it would just be weird. And then there'd be another, obviously we want a page break here in front of three, but we don't want all these random page breaks that are in here. So you go through, you clean it up, you make sure that your styles are headed the way that you want them to. You make sure you have your breaks where you want them or remove the ones that are in weird places. And then you're going to save, but you're, you can save it. I would save it as a Word doc. To be to have it there where you can access like this, but then so you know save, make sure you have it. But then also you're going to go to save as, and you're going to save it as a web page. Okay, you may have different options depending on um, what version of Word you're using, but save it as either with a web page .htm or .filtered, whichever. Um, so we're going to save it as a web page. <clears throat> Then you're going to hop on over to Kindle and you're going to upload that .html document. Once it's uploaded, you can um, click on your preview section. Okay, so I'm just going to show you in KDP. So you're in here, you've, you've come into the content. You want to make sure that you um, fill everything out. You upload your cover creator and, um, and your file. So, I always enable DRM management. You're going to upload your ebook manuscript. You can upload any of these types of files, but we've just made ours into an HTML file. We've set it up. We know what it looks like. So then you're going to go find it. You're going to upload it here. Um, and once it has uploaded, it will give you the option to launch the previewer. So you launch the previewer and you can, sc you can look through it and see if that it looks the way you want it to look. If there's any issues whatsoever with it, you come back and you go through and you try and fix those issues and make it make it look right, figure out where the issue may have been. Like if there's a random break in there, that's because you have a random weird page break that shouldn't be in there. Um, so, you know, fix those things up again, then do the same process. Save it as the HTML, hop over to KDP, upload it, and preview it. That is the simplest way to convert 
uh, a, a Word doc to an ebook if you have a simple document. If you have images or other things that you need to include into it, you follow the same process, but you're going to want to make sure that you insert the image. Don't copy and paste an image, but actually insert the picture from the file and center it. Make sure it's centered. Okay? If you have any questions, please reach out and let me know.